of brothers and sisters. It's your brother G World Seven Underscore D, and I have this book right here called Population Dynamics of the Philippine Rainforest People. Now, I want to say this: I get these stupid mestizos coming to my channel, man, telling me that the people of Kupan and Takao weren't quote Sub-Saharan African. Now, not all so-called bleep. Black people come from Sub-Saharan Africa. But see, this is what's been ingrained in society. And you hear a lot of these goofy Pan-Africans and what's being taught at these HBCU schools and these college universities that, quote, so-called black Americans come from somewhere else and they come from Sub-Saharan Africa, so-called Negro Africa. So when you use those terms Sub-Saharan Africa, that is racist. No matter what some goofy coon Negro tell you or some white liberal tell you, that terminology, Sub-Saharan Africa, is extremely racist. Because that's just an updated term of Black Africa. Or Negro Africa. A nigger Africa. But I'm going to go to this book. And I want you to pick up on certain things. Population Dynamics of the Philippine Rainforest People. I want you to pick up on certain things. I'm going to turn. Alright. And deal with here. It's going in the first chapter. The San I Delfonso Ejita. Okay. You see them little Negroes right there. I'm going to show you more pictures of these little Negroes. Here you go. These little Negroes. <laughs> little diminutive Negroes. You know. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to get more detail. The people in place. The Negritos. Tiny groups of Negritos are scattered throughout the forest of the Philippines, Philippines, and other countries of Southeast Asia. Physically, these people are distinguished by dark skin color, frizzy hair, and short stature. Men average 152 centimeters, 5 feet in height, and women 141 centimeters, 4.5 feet. They are frequently referred to as pygmies. A term more is actually uh, degrading. A term more correctly used for Central African pygmy populations. Racist ass terms. They have traditionally been known as aboriginal inhabitants of the rainforest and use bows and arrows. Use bow and arrows to hunt large game. Most of the Southeast Asian Negrito populations are rapidly disappearing. Far fewer in number in the 1990s than they were 100 to 300 years ago. Several Negrito groups in the Andaman Islands have become extinct in the last 100 years. That's right off the coast of India. The four remaining Andaman Negrito groups had declined greatly since the first census there in 1901. With the Ange, for example, dwindling from 1,000 then to 96 in 1988. It's probably lower, even lower now. Here's some stuff I want, I'll want. probably talk about another time about them. The 10 Negrito dialect groups in Peninsula of Malaysia number only 1,800 today. Far fewer than in the last century. The Negrito groups in Thailand have declined to only 300 people. All right. Most of Asian Negritos are found in the Philippines, where 29 ethno linguistic populations live on six of the major islands in that country. These Negritos have also greatly diminished in number since 1600, from around 10% of the Philippine population then, which was less than a million, to only 0.5% of that nation's population today. In 1994, these 29 populations number approximately 31,000. These groups refer to themselves by terms such as Aita, Ajita, Alta, Arta, Eta, Et. Atta, Batak, and Man, excuse me, Ma Manwa. 
Outsiders usually refer to them as Negritos. <laughs> now I'm going to stop right there, man. I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Now these little, these little Negroes travel around the world, man. With their little bow and arrows, man. And their simple lifestyle. They were here in America. The Americas. Because I've seen images of them even in Mexico. Mexico. Alright. But I want to show you certain other images. And I want you to really pick up now. Hear them at a campsite. At like a little straw little hut. Or a little home. I the term hut. Here's another image of the Negrito, little, these little Negroes, the little bow and arrow. Here they are right here walking. Here's some of these Negrito in their little village. All right, Negrito and their little family. You know, like a little campfire. All right, or they cooking a little monkey. Who's cooking a little monkey there? I guess this is a little pig right here they're cooking right here. Negrito, these little Negrito blacks doing over here. Now this is over in Southeast Asia. Now, this is one of the pictures I really want to show you. Now look at these so-called sympathy Negroes had. Okay, they had a dugout boat. This is not a very sophisticated boat, but they had a dugout boat. Now I talked about how black people sailed around the world, and they had sophisticated boats. These little Negroes had a little dugout boat right here, and he going around fishing. And you see a lot of brothers and sisters. You see them over in Africa. You see them over in America, especially by the coastal regions. By, like in the southern part of Mississippi or Alabama, those Negroes get by the lake or the ocean, and they go do a lot of fishing in little dugout or little smaller boats. These Negroes are doing the same thing, but they're doing their little dugout boats. Look at this. So this is a little simple little boat that they made and designed. I want to show you more images of these little black people, man. You know, because some of these black people were, they came over here by choice, and some of them actually were brought over here as slaves, man, by the goddamn Spanish. But um, that's why you look at some of the Mexicans, man, you you see very different type of black Mexicans. They all didn't come from Africa. A lot of people came from the Pacific Islands. Then you had some who already were there who looked like more Australoid. Then you had some who looked like they're from the Congo, man. Look at this. Eat these little Negroes here. I, I'm gonna be careful because they, they had these. Uh, they show some of these women with uh, uh, show their breasts, man. I, I, when you look at these books, man, I, I really wish these anthropologists would, wouldn't do that. Show off the woman's breast and everything. Yeah, I don't want to see that. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that. I mean, that's that's the that's them in their natural habitat, but I just really wish they can do a better job. Of kind of like blurring that out to some degree. Alright. Here's a little Negro here. Alright. And what happened was some of these black people were in a mixing with invading white folks, creating the modern day Asian pale population. Because they, some of them still have the nose of certain black people and then the mouth, but they had a pale skin. And more of a straighter hair, even though you have black people with indigenous black people with straight hair. Right? You have various images, images, but like I said, these black folks travel the world and they weren't just situated in one location. I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to get brothers and sisters to realize that all black people are not just in Africa. They travel around the world. And black Americans are a mixture of these very different black groups. Look at him. Notice around his neck. And notice, look at his, his earlobe right here. This brother right here. Okay. Now, no, no, you got to pick up on certain things. You know, little Negroes here. When you listen to these goofy white scholars, oh, those are not Negroes, those are Caucasians. <laughs> Whatever, man. You, you you get to laugh when they start, how they just lie and distort history. Like I said, I've been studying this for years. I know they're compulsive liars. They're pathological liars, man. If I can get a clear image of that. These are Negroes. Ah, I can't get clear. I don't know why. 
I can get a clear image there. But when you also look at some of these black people that had like with some little straw, um, straw, uh, I don't know what, what you call it, uh, uh, like straw type dresses that you see a lot of Hawaiians wear. It started with these Aboriginal black people, not only in the um, in the Pacific Islands, but over in Africa and here in the Americas. She looks like any black kid that you see here in Chicago on 119th Street, man. <laughs> you see, out in the uh, out in the mighty hundreds, out in the far mighty hundreds. I, I'm I'm I, I'm showing this, making this video for the sole purpose I want brothers and sisters instilled in minds. That so-called black people traveled around the world. We weren't just in so-called Africa, and we were not just so-called sub-Saharan. Black people traveled around the damn planet, and they weren't just isolated in one area. So this is this is something. This is a good book, and this is talking about these little black people of the so-called Philippines or the Philippine area, and they showed them in a in a natural habitat doing their natural thing. But you had different types of black people globally. You know, we all we we are not all for from sub-Saharan Africa. That's the biggest lie you hear. That all black people from sub-Saharan Africa. No, so-called black people are global people. You notice they in the rainforest. They travel. They, they travel and hid in the rainforest. But then a lot of our people cut and cut and carve the trees in the rainforest and build great pyramids and monuments and highways within the rainforest. It, it could it it, it could have been done and it was done. So that's just a quick video I wanted to do. I want to then connect these black people to these other black people around the world globally and let people understand that all so-called black people aren't just African. You have to understand that. And that's the problem with so much with Pan-Africanism. You're very narrow. It's very uh, a narrow approach and scope to looking at black people globally. All right. But these are indigenous Negroes of the Philippines. And what happened was many of them who didn't mix went into the forest, okay? They went into the forest while the ones who did mix were amalgamated and out. And some did migrate even further to the west, but then they were amalgamated out or east, whatever. But they were amalgamated out and bleached out. And that's why you look at the, the features with the eyes. That's like I said, that's what modern Asians have. They are a mixture, they are a black-white mixture, all right? But these are the original people of Asia. These little black folks are the original people of Asia. And they were here in the Americas too. They were part of the great jumbo mix of very different black people in the Americas, which formed the great different black aboriginal tribes in America. All right, there's so many different black people I see were here in the Americas. All right, so many uh, types, so many different uh, hair textures of black people. We always range from blue black to a yellowish skin tone. Without, without having so-called white act mixture. We always originally had, we the original people had blonde hair and blue eyes. It did not originate with so-called white people. It originated with us, all right? So I want you to understand that. It is little black folks were the original people of the world. The original Vikings were these little short statured Negroes, all right? Then you had larger, taller blacks. The original people built a lot of those miles and miles with little short, little diminutive Negro, dwarfy Negroes. Like little leprechaun Negroes, all right? They built, they were the original builders, and then came the larger and taller black folks. So that's just something I want to give you, man. Give you some good information. Do your own research. Continue to do the studying. Continue to to destroy them devils, man, because they continue to lie. There's so much great information out here. I'm giving, to, giving you a lot of the great sources that are out here that is there. That is right on your nose. Like the image of ISIS, so-called ISIS. Also, it was worshipped around the world. All right, one of the greatest, one of the biggest places that ISIS was worshipped at was over in Paris. Paris, ISIS, Paris, ISIS. It sounds similar because that was one of the spots that ISIS was really um, revered, venerated at that location. All right, these these white scholars are not gonna tell you that. They gonna just then tell you some other garbage that oh they didn't believe in no pagan god, whatever everything. And then in the image of black people, the white people just. Basically looked at them in awe, but actually black people ruled all over the world. All right, you need to understand that. All right, so this is me. I'm out. This is my history. You're talking about the population dynamics of the Philippine rainforest people. All right, peace and love.